Hi guys, this is GKCS. Uh, we are talking about TP on graphs this time, and there's a very common problem called the lowest common ancestor. So we'll be talking on that. This is extensively used in heavy light decomposition, in Euler Turing, and everything else. So this is pretty interesting, and let's have a look. So we have this tree with us. So it's a special case of a graph. It's just a tree, and we need to find the lowest common ancestor between two nodes, A and B. So this is the way we do it. Let's say there's A, and let's say there's B over here. And to find the lowest common ancestor means you go up this tree from both sides till you meet a common point, right? So A goes up, this way B is also going up, its parents, so all the way up here, A and B meet one. So the lowest common ancestor for 8 and 11 in this tree is 1, right? Uh, let's take something more interesting, let's take 5. The lowest common ancestor for 5 and 8 would be 2. So 5 would go up and A would go up and they would meet this common point. So 2 would be the LCA, short form. Okay, so this algorithm, the one that we just saw, is pretty slow. And in fact, it is order n per LCA that you need to find. So most algorithms use the LCA so extensively that you need to do this multiple times. And order n per LCA is not good enough for a pair of nodes. So at this point what is holding us back is going up this tree, which in the worst case is order n if you have an unbalanced tree. So let's not do this the simple way of going up one by one. Let's try a better algorithm. What do we want? We want to jump at certain heights. So at 12, and if you're looking at the LCA for 12 and 22, we know it's going to be one. So if we could jump to one efficiently, our job would be done. How would you do that? Well, Look at 1 and look at 12. They are away from each other by a particular distance, right? a particular height, let's call that h. Now, jumping from 12 to 1 is still not known. So let's try to break this down. Let's try to divide and conquer this. So I'm going to go at a parent of height h by 2. Okay, that seems reasonable. So this h in this case is going to be 4. So h by 2 is 2 which is this node, here height is equal to 2. So what I've done is from 12, I have tried to think of going to node 4, which is at height 2. But my overall uh, job is to go to node 1, which is at height 4. But from 4, what you see is you need to do the same thing again. You need to go to 1, which is at height 2 from 4. So we have taken this larger job and broken it into smaller parts. Exactly how? Well, the parent of the node that we are at with height by 2, we use that node, that parent node, and find its parent at height by 2 to get the parent of this node at height h. Right, this is the recurrence. In fact, it's going this way. But yeah, this is the recurrence that we have. So we have these two recurrence relations given to us. The first one being that to get to the parent at height h, you go to the parent at height h by 2 and find its h by 2 parent. And the second one being that if the height is just 1, then you can trivially find out by pre-computing the parent of that particular node. All right, so these two are the recurrence relations that we have, base condition and the relation itself. So now we can make jumps efficiently, or can we? Well, you see that there is h by 2 here, and height of the tree can be, in the worst case, n. So if you do this for every node, which are n in number, height of the tree in the worst case is n, so that gives us order n squared, pre-computations, which is quite a bit. Per node, you're trying to find out all the parents at particular heights. So, can we do better? Yes. You don't need to find out all the parents for a given node. Okay, you don't need to find out the third, the fifth, the sixth, etc. parents for every node. You just need to find out the parents at height, which are at power of two. Okay, the reason being that you don't want to uh, take into account what happens if you divide by two a number which is not a power of two. Okay, so what we'll be doing is just storing the powers of 2 
heighted parents, which is log n in number. And because you're doing this for every node, that's n log n computations. And even better is that actually find it, dividing this number by two is now not going to create any headaches. Okay. You know the parent at one, two, four, eight, so on and so forth. What else? We don't need to go for a recurrence relation here. We could use dynamic programming to uh, store these values at height h by two to find out the parents at new heights. So that will be parent of the node at height h is equal to the parent of the parent of the node at height. I think we're going off the board, so I'll just write that here. H by two, comma h by two. Okay, so this is the So this is the 2D array that we'll be storing to find the parents at any given height. But h is a large quantity. So what we can do, because we are only storing powers of 2, is just store the exponent of 2 that h is. So h is some power of 2, 2 raised to power x. So instead of storing x, we can just store x. h by 2, the exponent of that is going to be 2 raised to power x minus 1. So we are going to store x minus 1 here, and similarly x minus 1 here. Yeah. So this is how we can calculate for any given node a parent at height x using pre-computed values. The other thing of course is if x is 1, then we are going to use the base condition over here to get pre-computed parent of this node. All right, this is the parent at height 1. So you can do that using a BFS. Pretty simple uh, to, to find the parent at height 1 for any node. Right, so now we know how to jump up this tree efficiently because we can jump at powers of 2 now. What do we do to find out the LCNN? Well, we need to make them jump at a particular height such that the parent has to be the same. So the algorithm goes like this. So let's say we are trying to find the LC of this node and this node now. And you see the red arrows with the numbers, they are representing the depth of the tree. Okay, so this node is at depth 5, this node is at depth 4, and we are trying to find the LCA. So this is a little tricky because you can't directly find the LCA. Uh, because there are different heights, you don't know at what points you're going to jump. Okay, so what you need to do is bring both the nodes at the same height. So here's the thing. You find out the difference in the heights of the trees and then you'll find out the parent of this node corresponding to the same height. So 4 is the height of the first node, that is over here, and 5 is the height of the second node. So you'll try to find the minimum height, which is 4. So this node needs to find the parent corresponding to height 4. So that's 5 minus 4, giving you 1. You need to find the parent at level 1 from this node. All right. uh, in fact, that will be pre-computed already. So that would be a direct hit over here. On the other hand, if it was a little more complicated, if it was 3 or something, then what you would do is find the parent at height 3, but here's how you do it. It's a binary number, 3 is 1, 1, 0. So, in fact, it's 1, 1. So you find the parent at height 1, then you find the second parent of the parent at height 1. And if this was, let's say, 7, and there would be another one here, then you would find the fourth parent of the resultant parent, all right, and so on and so forth. So this is because it's a binary number. Any number can be represented as a binary number, and you can make those jumps corresponding to ones or zeros in the number that you have. All right, so in our example, we are just going over here. So we need to find the LCA now between this node and this node. Okay, you have just brought them to the same level. And the way you can calculate the level is actually just by doing a PFS. That's pretty easy and it's in the code. So you can have a look at that. Right, so LCA of two nodes at the same level. This is pretty easy. All you need to do is make sure that the two nodes 
while we're going up never touch each other so if this is a and this is b a should never be equal to b but right? if a and b are equal if you have jumped too high then we don't know whether the lcv was somewhere down all right so what we are going to do is never let that happen we are always going to keep a not equal to b by making our jumps small so a and b are both at a depth 4 in our case now so 4 is a binary number 100 zero, zero. now this number is going to represent something to us we start off at this index which is the largest bit which is set and have a look at this this means make a jump of size 4 can we do that let's try so 1 2 3 we have exceeded the index so 4 is not going to happen let's try the next number which means make a jump of size 2 so that's 1 2 and that's it so you're at this node try for b 1 2 you're at this node do the two nodes match is this node equal to this node of course not so you can make this jump and you should so we have made a jump of size 2 now what else these are the two nodes now these are the modifieds a and b okay modified a's and b's so uh, these two are done we are in this index which tells us that make a jump of size one can we do that let's try make a jump of size one comes here and make a jump of size one comes here again are these two nodes the same a and b point in the same node yes so we are not allowed to make this jump we won't and so we we'll skip this index and go for the small index but none exist so the algorithm terminates with a and b pointing to these two nodes okay and the algorithm is guaranteed to always terminate when it's one away from the parent from from the lca itself so when the algorithm terminates you can give the lca of node a and b as the parent of a the current a at height one okay and this is already pre-computed so in fact you can just give our pre-computed parent of the current a or even current b is fine so that's it that gives you the lca of the two nodes a and b the original a's and b's so this algorithm is extensively used you should get to know about this really well uh, the next topic is also on dynamic programming with graphs. So if you have any doubts or suggestions on this, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, I have the code for this in the description. And until next time then, see you.